All right, guys, so today I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of our tool trailer. A little bit of background about what we do is we do landscaping. So anything from interlocking, retaining walls, decks, fences, anything like that. Pretty much anything on the outside of the house will do. Uh, so, yeah, here is the trailer. It is a eight and a half wide by 14 cross trailer. We have dual 5,500 pound axles, as well as a ramp door in the back. We have a side door. Uh, we opted to go for the flat front on the front of the trailer, as well as an extended tongue, because sometimes we do tow this thing with our five ton uh, dump trucks. So it, sometimes we found that if you're trying to get it into a customer's driveway, um, and you're turning too sharp, the back of the dump box will hit the V if it was a V front. So we opted to go with the flat front. Uh, as well, it is a, we upgraded to 16 inch on center um, framing instead of 24. We got the smooth uh, sides, so screwless. Um, we are gonna get this thing wrapped, that's where it's going next. A couple other things we did to the outside was we added some LED lights on the side, as you can see up here. We got one on this side, one on the other side of the trailer, as well as uh, two on the back side here. So we got one there and one there. This trailer is does have wiring on the inside, so we do have a uh, GFI. 15 amp plug here that we will use uh, to set up our saws and, and other stuff like that if we are working close to the trailer. So yeah, let's get this thing opened up and I'll give you a tour of the inside. All right, so starting out on the left side of the trailer here, how we did it is that we have all of our hardscaping tools on this side, and we have all of our deck building, fence, and kind of woodworking stuff on this side. So let's start over here. Um, first thing we got, we got a slot here that runs down the side over top of the wheel well for our track mats. Uh, we usually have four of them in there. Two of them must be out somewhere. Here we got our big stone vacuum as well as a hose. And along the top here, we have our big eight foot level as well as our seven foot screening levels. Next to that, we have our 10 foot screening bars. And then in this last slot here, we have our five foot screen screening bars uh, coming inside the trailer now. On the top shelf, we have all of our power tools. So we keep two concrete saws with us just in case something happens to one of them, hand blower and a backpack blower. Underneath that here, we have a slot here for our levels. In the back, I have my um, big Stabila tripod for our transit laser. Uh, next up here, we got a little shelf for our uh, caulking guns. So this is for the adhesive when we build retaining walls, stuff like that. Here we have spare blades for our concrete saws as well as a couple um, metal saw, metal blades there as well. Um, and then down here we have our pack out drawers. I really like this system. Um, I'm not a cabinet builder. So it was a lot easier to just buy these pack outs than it was to spend a whole bunch of time making the uh, individual drawers. 
Over here, you got a little spot for our pins. Um, you got your, out of here, got your longer pins on the top, and then you have shorter ones here in the bottom. So let's go through the drawers. Here, we got some chalk lines, just some general uh, measuring and marking stuff, as well as spare string line. Next shelf down, measuring tapes. Um, keep a whole bunch of these fittings that go on the concrete saws to attach the hose to them so it keeps the dust down. Whole bunch of um, utility knives as well as these things. Not sure if you guys know what these are, but these things go around the metal stakes and you can tighten them down. And then in these little slots here, you can wrap your string line inside of them. So it's a real nice, easy way to get a nice tight string line and establish a level. Just some extra pencils and some soapstone. Next right down, just some other miscellaneous stuff. Got some blades for the grinder, some fabric staples, random stuff, brooms, shims, and stuff like that. Next one over, we have all of our mallets. Next one down is the chisels and uh, hard face hammers. So that in this one here, uh, this one's not completely done yet, but this is going to be like an irrigation and electrical, like landscape lighting box. So we've got some random tools up in the top here. Here we got uh, some irrigation tools, cutter, crimper. You got your uh, one inch tube crimps. You got your three quarters, a couple of the waterproof morettes and some wire strippers there. In the bottom here, just keep a bunch of miscellaneous fittings, three quarter and one inch, just in case we hit a line or something when we are doing uh, some digging for uh, interlocking, just so we can repair that. Um, as well, this one is on a pack out tray. So this one, we can remove it. If we are going to do a interlocking job, instead of bringing the whole trailer, we can just bring this pack out itself. Uh, all the other ones that we have here, they are screwed down because I don't plan on taking them anywhere. So those ones are permanently in place. Uh, in the bottom here, we have our Stabila laser level. And next to it here, we have our rolling pack out. Got a crate here. And then you got your big storage in the bottom. So my idea was you come in the morning, you can take whatever you want out of these drawers, put it in the crate, and then you can just roll this to wherever you have to go. It'll just slide in. Next up, we got our pressure washer in the bottom here, as well as we have our stone tamper. So this one's nice after you do the sanding, you don't have to put a rubber mat underneath your regular tamper. You can just use this thing and it doesn't damage the stone. Next to it, we have our plate compactor. So this one does all the gravel and stuff like that. Next to it, we have our big IQ saw. Uh, this thing is really nice if you're doing uh, like angled cuts it's really nice to be able to do it on a table uh, on top of all of that we have our milwaukee mx power station um, so this thing is wired so that um, the whole trailer can run off of this thing okay, super quick i just want to add something in here um, the other reason that we have that mx power station is to power any of our corded tools such as our stone vacuum um, track saw table saw and miter saw it's super nice to have that and just bring it wherever you want instead of having to find a outlet on the side of the customer's house and have tons of extension cords running all over the place so that's another reason that we have that and it, it is super nice or it can run off of shore power that comes from here i got a 80 foot hose reel um, and it runs down out through the floor i just got a little plug there that uh, when the extension cord isn't out it kind of covers up that hole and then in the back here behind the saw we have a uh, breaker box that uh, controls everything uh, here uh, we are going to put a coffee maker and probably a water jug and then above that we're going to do a microwave so that's what that plug is for and we have our rigid shop back here next up kind of going around um, we got these hooks here for our tool belt so this is mine and this is the helper that's working with me when we're doing uh, decks and fences, stuff like that. Coming down, we have a 
hook for an extension cord. We don't use too much corded stuff. We do have a couple like our uh, miter saw here. I'm thinking to upgrade to battery ones, but I'm not 100% sure on that yet. So we'll just see where that goes. We do have it on a rigid miter saw stand. This thing is super nice um, to be able to just roll it out and set it up. You don't have to get your saw horses and make a table out of some plywood. Next thing over here, uh, hand tools. I couldn't really find a better way to store any hand tools, especially like putting the racks on the on the wall. It just took up too much real estate. So I kind of just made a box here and I got a bungee cord. We got all our hand tools over here in this corner. Coming around above the door, we have a whiteboard and some uh, markers just in case we need to buy some stuff. Uh, we can kind of keep track of it there, write it down so we don't forget and then now we are on to the my favorite side of the trailer which is the woodworking with all of our nice tools and it's really nicely organized i'm super happy with how this side turned out so on the top here we have our little giant mega max ladder uh, this thing is really nice it can fold into an ape frame you can extend it i think 20 feet so it is a really nice ladder to have coming down here we have a fire extinguisher and first aid kit right beside the door, so super easy to access if you need it. And coming down here, I'll just step out of the trailer. We have kind of a little layout wall here, so just grab and go stuff. Once you get to the site for the first time, we can measure some stuff out. Uh, we've got spray paint as well as our uh, line marker here. It just sits inside there and it comes out. Uh, under here as well, we have our two sawhorses. They just slide in there nice and tucked out of the way. Uh, over here, we have our all of our plugs and lighting setups. So this box here is it controls the lights on the outside of the trailer, the LED lights that I was telling you guys about earlier, um, the, the two on the side and two on the back, as well as I have these little LED strips here wired into that as well so that if we don't have shore power for some reason our uh, Milwaukee power station isn't here we can at least have some lights and it is all run off of a Milwaukee M18 battery which is pretty cool uh, underneath here you have your main switch for the lights on the trailer the two big lights uh, on the top Next switch over, this stuff came with the trailer. So this one is if you are connected to a truck, um, it takes power from the truck and it turns on just these small little LED lights here. They aren't really that nice, but I didn't want to take them out because there already is a switch here and stuff. Uh, we got two switches here, or two outlets, sorry, for whatever we want, as well as our dual bank rapid charger. Uh, and this switch here, um, what it is is, we can choose where we want to pull power from for the entire trailer. So right now one is on the shore power side. So that is the extension cord reel over here that goes through the floor. It's just plugged into an outlet at our shop right now. But if I want to, um, I can switch this switch to number two. The trailer power will shut off. And then over here, we plug in our power station to this uh, cord here and then you turn it on and then it takes a little bit to turn on but then you have power to the entire trailer as well um, chargers all the plugs will be run off of our uh, power bank here so let me just switch that back because the power station makes a little bit of noise there we go so Next thing we got here is, um, this was kind of a Ron Polk inspired, inspired side of the trailer. Um, I did a lot of research before we started building this trailer and I feel like this is the best way. So here we've got all of our batteries. This whole bank here is only for charged batteries. So any battery on here, you know, is fully charged. If you need to charge a battery, you throw it on the charger and then once it's charged, then it comes out here. Uh, as well here, we have our tracks for our Makita track saws. And we got a couple impact drivers and a drill here. Just quickly, if you have to grab and go. 
Uh, starting over here in our compartments, I have a grease gun because uh, we have a Bobcat MT100 that comes to site with us. So usually we'll grease that thing up about once a week. I have our uh, finish nailer here, got a router, jigsaw. Here I keep a sander as well as a drywall zip tool. Um, it was just in the shop and I thought we'd put it in the trailer. As well here we have grinder, multi-tool, sawzaw. We have our Makita corded planer and the Makita corded track saw. These are the only two corded tools that we still have left. Um, we don't use the planer that much, but I am looking to get the Milwaukee track saw as well. Here we have our six and a half uh, saw, and then just some random stuff here, some clamps, a spare um, magazine for the nail gun and a spare handle for the drills. And then up top here, I just made these little brackets here. So these come down, uh, we have our ram set up there, a big chalk line, as well as a corded concrete drill. And I just keep a spare charger up there as well. So we'll close that up. Next thing over here, same thing, another hinge here. So in this box, we have a drill driver kit. So there's two batteries in there, a drill, a driver, charger. So if we are going in the morning, to like a backyard to build a deck usually we'll just take this thing instead of taking these two individual ones and obviously if we need more we will take these ones and in here we have our milwaukee m18 sds uh concrete drill with the dust extractor on it so this thing is super nice um, as well we keep a fully charged six amp hour high output battery in here. So these things are kind of just, if you need them, you can just grab the case, go, you'll know you have a charged battery and all the stuff you need. So like I said, on the other side, I'm not a cabinet maker, so I didn't want to make a whole bunch of cabinets. So the solution that I came up with is we have our workbench here and I made these things on a hinge on the top. So, and it opens up and you can access everything inside these drawers um, i had this little random kind of space here and i didn't want to just put stuff in from the front because then you wouldn't be able to see what's in the back or what you have so i thought this was the best solution make it so that you can open up the top and you can kind of see everything that's in here so it's kind of a mess right now but here we got nails and kind of structural stuff when we're framing decks uh, in this one we have screws uh, so deck screws, um, we like, we do a lot of composite decking. So we got our clubhouse screws here with the, uh, plugs. So you don't see any of the screws in this one. We have just random miscellaneous stuff. I really haven't, um, got this thing figured out the way I want yet. So that's still a work in progress under here. We keep our DeWalt table saw. This thing as well is corded. Um, thinking to get a Milwaukee M18 one but we're not there yet. Next up under here, we have all of our painting supplies as well as our M18 uh, two gallon vacuum. And we have a little pancake air compressor there that runs our finish nailer when we're doing fascia boards on a deck. And underneath we have some milk crates here, just got some straps, chains for, you never know when you'll need that stuff. And then here we just keep a bunch of spare joist hangers, extra stuff left over for some jobs. Same thing here, just more Simpson, Simpson stuff. Uh, got a bunch of hurricane ties here for when we're building decks as well here. We've got a bunch of these brackets for building fences. And then I just have an empty milk crate under there right now. There's nothing inside there. So moving along up here, I forgot to mention when we were up here, but this is the I don't even know what you call it. Um, quick can is so you don't have to carry around a garbage can. You just put this thing inside of a garbage bag and it makes a garbage can for you. So that thing's super nice, stays up there. So we'll start from the top. We have a uh, Milwaukee hole saw kit on the top there. This uh, pack out is full of plumbing supplies. So a lot of the decks that we do, they have kitchens on them. So we do have to run some PEX plumbing and we have all of our fittings in there. This one is full of concrete screws. This one we have wood screws so that these things you can just grab and go if you have to go somewhere. Working our way down here, we have a full 
like tool kits, so wrenches, screwdrivers, all kind of stuff like that. Uh, in this one, top drawer, we have saw blades and sawzall blades. Next one down, we have router bits, jigsaw blades, and multi-tool blades. Here we have a Craig jig for the borders. When you do 45s, we like to screw them together so that they don't come apart. Just a bunch of extra stuff, string lines, pencils. Uh, we have spare chalk, got a spare chalk box there, as well as some tape measures. And I just keep a little uh, laser here. It's nice just to have a quick one that you can set up instead of doing the Stabilo one. Uh, next drawer down here, we have drill bits. So we got all of our SDS bits here. Um, regular drill bits, we got our, I don't even know what these are called, but they make a hole in, in wood, like I think they're called spade bits. These things are super nice when you're doing plumbing, you just have to run a small line. Uh, we have a bit kit there and just a whole bunch of spare extra bits here. Next drawer down, this one's going to be full of PPE, so a couple pairs of safety glasses, gloves, some ear protection, masks, whatever we need. And in the bottom here, just got some oversized stuff that didn't fit in any drawers. So extra router bits, um, extra hole saws. We got the tools to change the blades on the grinder, hammers, big square, stuff like that. And in the bottom here, in this one, this is a rolling pack out as well. I keep our um, big skill saw worm drive seven and a quarter, as well as our nail gun. Uh, I decided to keep this stuff just inside this pack out because if we are doing a deck or a fence, usually this stuff is going to come with us no matter where we go. So this thing just stays in here because this thing will always go with us. Uh, slide that back in. And then on the back here, we keep a, I think it's a five foot step ladder and then just a small little three or four foot step ladder as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the trailer. Um, let me know if you guys like it or if you guys would like to improve, if there's anything you guys think we can improve on it. Uh, this is our first time doing a tool trailer like this. So let me know what you guys think and if you guys see something that we should change that you guys think will be a problem. But I'm super happy with how it turned out. And uh, yeah, so last thing I wanted to explain is here how this uh, Milwaukee, uh, these lights work. So if you see here, I have three switches. Um, they are labeled, which is super nice. So we have the lights for the rear. We have the side lights and we have the interior lights. So what I'll do is I'll I'll turn the lights off in the shop and uh, and close the door as well. And I will get some uh, pictures here with those lights on so you guys can see uh, how that stuff works. All right, so we got the lights in the shop turned off and all the doors closed. So the only light source coming out of this thing is the lights from the trailer. So you can see it's super bright, super nice. If we have to do any loading uh, early in the morning or if we're finishing up later at night when the days get shorter, uh, at least we ha still have a little bit of light. So you got the two in the back that kind of shine down on the ramp door if you have to load the uh, machine, as well as on the side here, you got the other light. And you can see now the three lights that I have wired in lights up the entire trailer. And then I also have a LED strip running underneath the kind of worktop here that also helps light that up. So yeah, the uh, another thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that when we were building this trailer, a big thing for us was to keep a 40 inch wide space in the middle here so that we can drive our Bobcat MT inside of here and it can go with us to site. So that was a super, big deal when you we were building this thing we wanted to make sure that we could also put our machine inside of here so yeah that's uh, about it for this video like i said before let me know if there's anything you guys see that we can improve on or some red flags if you guys already have a tool trailer and uh, there's stuff that you see here that hasn't worked for you guys make sure you guys uh let me know but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys on the next one